Slurp. Had those aftermath feels again. Just like in uh, episode 3 of Love of Kill. Pero, um, the, the three main protags didn't get to rest that, uh, that long. Kasi, uh, ang setting, three months after that happened. Pero lumalaga na palang droga ngayon. It's called Drug D. Hindi alam ng mga ng, ng law mga law enforcement agencies kung saan ang gagaling ito. When uh, Shuta and Mari were, were closing up their respective uh, their respective establishments, napansin nila si si Kosue uh, naglalakad nung gabi yun. E sabi Nagtaka sila, nagtaka si Mari. Oh, tika, nasa labas mo ito si Kosue? Napansin ni Shuta. Eh, sinabi na lang ni Mari na ikaw, ikaw na lang humabol dun. Itignan mo na lang. It led them both to Shantytown. Eh, sinabi na nga ni Shuta na, Uy, huwag tayo rito. Bad news ang lugar na to. Ba't tayo na dito? Ano ba ginagawa? Ano ba gagawin mo rito? Sinabi na lang ni Kosue na, kung, kung ayaw mo rito sa lugar na to, umuwi, umuwi ka na lang kuya. Eventually, Nalaman natin ko yung uh, ano yung hinahanap ni Kosui rito. It's a piece of graffiti na na ginawang tribute para sa namatay niyang ama. So, na, nakita niya, uy, ito nga yun. Took pictures. Then, she met a guy there named Kunai. We eventually found out that uh, he's a member of Dored. Okay. At kilala niya ako sino leader, siyempre, si Ran. Pero hindi niya sinabi kay Kosue. Eventually, nahanap din ni... Kasi medyo humiwalay si Kosue kay Shuta. Because Shuta got busy um, uh, apprehending a drug dealer. Shuta found Kosue in another place naman. It's under the bridge. Meron ding graffiti doon na tinulungan niyang... tinulungan niya si Ran na makompleto. Pero hindi niya sinabi kay Cosway that that is that actually is Ron's work. Nakapatawaran yung yung dalawa. Wonderful. Then all of a sudden, the final scene came. Yung street yung street lamps were all flickering. Then what? Carnadis is up to his old tricks again. He hacks into everybody's phone, TV station, radio station, and announce, "Choose your future." Nakita-kita ko yung tatlong bida. So, nag-usap sila kung paano on, on, how to deal, on how to deal with this bastard na talagang walang, walang ibang bala kundi mang gulo sa 24th Ward. Then all of a sudden, aso may phone call. No. You know what happens? They receive their mission orders. Pero, pinakita doon sa vision na kung sino ang kung sino magiging uh, what's it called this main target nila dito it's kunai balak pala niyang pasabukin yung yung luxury cruise ship na na dadao sa ano na magdadao sa 24th ward mismo let's break that episode down now critic sub style pace I gotta admit, the pacing was so slow. Gumagano na ako eh. There were sleeper moments in this episode. I hate to say it, mga ka-lifestyle. Although yung final third, medyo nawala ang toko. All throughout, it was a little dragging. The only consolation you would have from this episode was yung how it ended. How it ended, and of course the um, yeah, new action sequence. Then of course, oh, final scene. Oh, the three are the three going to superhero mode again. Because to mau na naman si Aso misa kanila and they received their mission orders. That was my only complaint. I had uh, I had sleeper moments in this episode. Talagang magano na ako. I don't know if it's the time of day because right now it's. Um, Right now, it's 3 p.m. If you're a member of my fan group on Bigo, you would see that in, the rea in my reaction video. I tell you, talagang... Tapos, magagano na ako. 
Flow naman. First gear shift here was when Koki received information from that Sarg guy about drug D. Why did I call this a gear shift? Kasi it's a more worthwhile gear shift. Kasi there's a more pressing matter at hand na. At kung hindi tinanggap ni Koki yun, malamang uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't get to know Kunai and well, at the end of the episode his intentions now are blowing up a cruise ship and we wouldn't get to see uh, that place they call Shantytown second gear ship was when Kunai introduced himself to Kosue sinabi niya na ah, sa Dored yan but why did I call this a gear ship? what? Whoever thought that he would be the main target now of the uh, of the three main protagonist mission? Siya na ngayon na magiging kalaban nila. At kilala lang kilala ni Ran ito. Kilala lang hacker ito. Ang kap- kapwa niya hacker. At member pa ng grupo niya. Dored. So, you can say that this is the gear ship that will present the complications later on for for the three Final gear shift was of course Asuna's first call in three months. Oh, why did I call it a gear shift? No brainer, mga ka lifestyle. Nagpakita uli ang, ang 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 big bad ng anime na to. Although he is yet to show his true face. So these three gear shifts that I saw. Uh, 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 the last two will have implications down the line in this anime uh, even more so in the next episode Plotwise Despite the sleeper moments malinis ang plot Wala namang side story dito eh Wala namang back story So Again Despite the sleeper moments I had those aftermath feels Okay Kaya you, you can't you can't just iron out a plot to uh, to create an aftermath episode. Kailangan talaga malinis na plot to. You need to make the viewer go down that line, walk down that path of um, uh, recollection, forgiveness. Uh, the main, well, at least the the path the main pro tags uh, were were on after that in, in the three in the three months after that. So, talaga, it really felt like three months later because of the plot. So pace, flow, and plot they all came together for this episode. So Tokyo Twenty Fourth Ward episode four. I'm more than willing to forgive the sleeper moments here because um, overall, we I saw I saw this episode as ju- yeah a, se- a, go- a good setup for for the next one. Mukong mapapasabak na naman ng tatlong bide. So factor this is yeah, in time of day. Say well, one to three p.m. is usually nap time for you hu- for normal humans. Uh, I'm no normal human. <laughs> I haven't, like I said a while ago, Maka Lifestyle. I haven't been taking naps since, yeah, since I started this whole content creation thing, practically, even before the pandemic started. Say, uh, eventually I, w- I would be limiting my sleep as, as I grow older. Your your need for sleep lessens. Siguro ngayon pa lang naglessening need need ko for sleep, especially for taking naps. So anyway, I forgive the sleeper moments because um, 
I'm now treating this episode as a setup for the next one because of the final moments of this episode. Kaya, gano na ang rating ko. I was supposed to give it a uh, lower a rating lower than that. Pero, sabi ko, nope. You gotta... Uh, I have to take into consideration the, um, the final moments of this episode. And yung... Yeah, the action sequences na... That, uh, that involved run. Okay. So again, Tokyo 24th Ward, Episode 4. Could have been a lower rating, Maka Lifestyle, but you just can't count the uh, uh, Dorad's action sequence and the final moments of this episode now. Set up episode. Set up feels also. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still glued to the CHD, I strongly recommend again, subscribe to my Patreon or join my fan group on Bigo. Para may idea na kayo kung ano ang mga susunod kong i-review na anime. Of course, they're, they're, all in, they're all in the roster. Until next time, enjoy the other reviews on this digest. Continuation. So, uh, laban, 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 laban. Eventually, Bisco beats Pawu. Eh, well, uh, Bisco was also trying to um, trying to talk some sense into Pawu, but uh, but well, the lady just couldn't uh, just couldn't buy his story. While all this is going on, si Milo, okay, si Doc, si Doc Milo. He was um he was he was tending to Jabi, na well, really took a big hit despite being uh, he he is an old man and he took a beating like that. Um, sabi nga ni Jabi uh, ni ano ni Ma, ni Milo, napa patay na tumbo tadal to. Pero here he is, still breathing, but he's but uh it's probably the worst case of rusting that he has ever seen, si Milo. So, well, nagsimula na mag nagsimula na, nagsimula na magkwento si si Jabi about Bisco and uh, about him being his, being Bisco's mentor. Tapos yung mga kono talaga ang scenario uh, regarding the mushroom keepers. Dinala na ni Bisco si Pawu to um to Milo scare na nagulang si Milo eh. Ha? Nagkasago ba kayo ng ate ko? Natalo mo siya? <laughs> Sinabi ni Bisco na Pero mamang natitira doon sa Binigay ko siya yung injectable O yun, gamitin mo sa kanya O yun, ginamit Ginamit ng kapatid And medyo nag uh, Medyo nag Medyo nag uh, Nag ease up na yung breathing niya So, yeah Si Sando ba ito? Um, kumaga Gumagana na uli yung Yung parang va- Yung vaccine Sa kanya Ngayon, ang pinropose ni Jabi, magpaiwan na lang doon sa Imihama. And, well, since, kanya siguro, uh, since I am old, I'm, I'm not to, I'm not that, I'm not that quick anymore to travel with you. So, tumingin na lang siya ganun kay Milo, kanya siguro kay Bisco, ayan na, bagong partner mo. Sabi ni Bisco, you <laughs> Biglang sabat si Milo and he, he just stated his point on why he wants to go with Bisco in place of Jabi. Sabi ni Bisco, I'm outnumbered again here. O sige, sumama ka na. Pero, pa, paano yung ate mo? This may be the last time you're gonna see her. Ngayon, nagpaalam na si, nagbigyan na ng kanyang paalam si Milo. Then they proceeded now to um to the north gate where Aktagawa awaits yung yung giant crab na alaga ni yung alaga ni Bisco na natabuhan lang tabuhan lang animango <laughs> doon mismo sa sa mismong gate sa mismong north gate may nakabantay na so well, they're completely surrounded ginawa ni Bisco he shoots one of those arrows that sprout those that 
Sprout those tower-like mushrooms. Ayun. Nakataka sila. Final scene. Well, they came to the to the to the Nico War Memorial. Yung uh, well, basically Milo starts to feel Bisco in on the history of that memorial. Oh, ganito, 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 ganito. So, right after that, he's fascinated with uh, with Aktagawa. Kami niya, he's no ordin... This this is no ordinary giant crab. Then, biglang, gumalaw yung, yung mismong war memorial. Biglang. Para may lumabas pang dalawa... As in, parang, parang giant crab din yung nasa ilalim. <laughs> Sulat na kasi Milo, ha? <laughs> ano to? <laughs> Excuse me. Mahalai style. We're going to break that episode down right now. Critics of style. Pace. But, umpisa pa lang, mabilis ang pacing kasi may fight scene. And, pero, um, bumabagan ng bahagya every time the camera pans back to Jabi and Milo. Tama lang. Kasi, Parang mo bibilis na ng pacing dun. Eh, nagpapaliwanag nga yung matanda kung on how, on, uh, on, uh, what's, what's really going on and how, uh, yeah, on how, uh, and what Bisco really is as a person. Siyempre, kinikwen- kinwento lahat ni Javi ito. Men- Minentor niya si Bisco eh. Overall, hindi ko, hindi ko matatagalin ang assessment ko sa pacing, mga ka-lifestyle. Do I have complaints? No. <laughs> Wala. Kasi, uh, it's an action-packed episode. So, talagang mabilis ang pacing, pero, Studio Oz, yeah. Oz is the animation studio behind this anime. They found a way to somewhat tone the pacing down when it came to uh, Milo and Jabi. Then, nag-tone down ng konti rin nung nagkukumperensya sila Milo, Jabi, at Bisco kung, well, na kung dapat ay sumama pa si Jabi kay Bisco or not. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't feel that, uh, that tense spacing right there eh, kasi It was slow enough for me to understand what is actually going on. Kaya, no complaints when it came to the pacing. Flow naman! Uh, first gear shift here was was when Bisco finally got the upper hand against uh, against Pau. So why did I call this a gear shift? Aside from, yeah, it's, it was an action-packed scene. Pero, um, just goes to show you how um, that Bisco is not just is not just a brute eh. okay he's a brute that takes also kasi hindi hindi, hindi nga naman niya makausap ng matino itong si Pau eh, during the fight so okay utakan ko na lang ito baka sakali eh, the, when uh, when she uh, when she comes to after the poison pwede na siyang kausapin ng matino hmm just goes to show you how smart Bisco is. Maybe deep dive. Final gear shift. Dalawa lang yun. Was during, um, what's it called this? Was when Milo was saying, uh, was saying his goodbyes to, to his older sister. Why did I call this a gear shift? Dito ako nagkaroon ng idea kung ano magiging dynamic ng dalawang to eh. You know, I have a pretty good idea of how, of how these two are going to, uh, how these two are going to coexist after this, after this episode. These two gear shifts that I saw, um, both of them will have implications down the line in this anime. Pero ang mabigat yung final, yung huling gear shift, because we we now have an idea kung paano 
uh, kung paano magwo-work ang business relationship ng dalawang ito. Plot lies. Malinis. Okay, except for one um, backstory sequence that is parang ha? Pinakita yan. Ewan ko kung bakit siningit ng, ng Oz yun, yung eksenang yun. So, except for that, planchado, ay, planchado, malinis ang plot. Because, what? Uh, it's the episode that will, um, that will introduce the new, um, uh, that, will, that will introduce the new tag team that will, uh, that will be the centerpiece of this anime. So, you, you better, you gotta have a really clean plot in order for the viewer to understand that ito na, ang maging, ito na ang susubaybayan nating tandem. Hindi na sila Bisco at Jabi. Jabi's time with Bisco is over. Kasi he decided to stay in Imihama. No. Well, again, you need a really clean plot to, to pull this off. So, pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode, folks. So, Sabi ko with Bisco, episode 3. Why not? Two thumbs up! Incha. Now, let's talk about um, what's in store for all of us as the viewers of this anime. Based on what has transpired in uh, the latter half of this episode. Well, both are young. Si Bisco at si, si Milo. Pero, ang lumalabas ngayon eh, the smarter one is now Milo. Kasi, he's the, he's the doctor here. Legit na doctor to. So, talagang well-educated siya. Pero, natawa ko doon sa isang eksene. It's actually um, the post-credit. Post, may post-credit siya actually. So, Biglang, well, I, uh, I had a complete education. That was biglang sinabi ni Bisco, who are you calling bottom of the class? <laughs> so biglang, biglang na-insult, he felt insulted. So, that sequence also, also tells me kung anong, anong klaseng dynamic magkakaroon ang, dal, ang magkakaroon sa pagitan ng dalawang ito, ng dalawang characters na to. And well, it's probably gonna be a fun one. <laughs> of course, syempre, may mga samot sa mga adventures yan. All the more we should expect um, great things from this anime because of that dynamic alone. So again, Sabi ko with Bisco, episode 3, two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, mga lifestyle. Galing din bumawin. Galing. So Patreon, Wait for my next upload, especially for uh, my next review of uh, the, my review of the next episode. And for those of you who are still stuck with the CHD, chill lang. But I will still recommend you guys to um, subscribe to my Patreon or at least join my fan group on Beagle. But until then, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Oh. After Matt feels, kasi, um, you know, well, bottom line nila si Kaso ni, ni Riyang ha si Shato dito. So, habang naliligo si Shato, uh, pinaglabhan niya yung, tawag dito, uh, kinuha niya yung mga damit at may, may laundry mat pala doon sa hotel na yun. So, siya, nag, siya naglaba, basically. Eh, nagtataka nga si Shato kung, uh, Anong ginawa ni Riyaka sa mga damit niya eh? Sabi niya, oh, I, just took them, I just took them to the laundry man and they're now, they're now in the washer. All of them. Even your underwear. <laughs> Shato was able to deliver the message of her uh, assailant for Riyangha. Pagkasabi ni Riyangha that uh, you could have you told me that sooner, his, well, 
basically the backstory as of how uh, how he was branded a traitor by by how okay, bago bago pa lang ni Riyang Hanon, uh, it's only three he, uh, he, he was already three years into the organization ipo promote na siya samantalang si how ang tagal tagal na sa organization na yon hindi pa napo promote so yeah that, 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 that would piss any um, that would piss any ass kisser off okay so um uh, one night tinawag siya ng yung pinaka image superior niya si Xiong Wu uh, at sinabi na bukas clear your schedules kasi we're going out we're going out with uh with how for dinner eh habang in instruction ni Xiong Wu kung ano gagawin he was closing the door he was uh, drawing drawing the curtains he was, um, well, ultimately, pulls out his gun, na may silencer, BAM! Pinaroon niya sa ulo si Xiong Wu. So, I guess, this was how his rampage within the organization started. So while this was going on, nakapag-report na si Shato sa company nila. And, todo sorry. Kasi, kasi nga, eh, kasi nga naman may may namatay na testigo eh they, they really need that witness alive kasi as well number one as proof of work para mabayaran sila and uh, Shato just simply um, simply poured out all her apologies even um, what you call this even to the point of not answering her boss's question na na in contact na ba siya with uh, with, with Ryong Ha with, with, with Ryang Ha hindi niya sinagot yun basta I'm sorry siya nang I'm sorry and then she, she just went home ngayon pa pauwi na siya ando din si Ryang Ha sa pintuan ng apartment niya ayaw niya papasukin pero inisip inisip niya na baka dito naman mag cap out tong tong mukong na to Sige nga, papapasukin ko ito. Uh, nakita ni Ryang ha, yung isang, isang family picture niya. Uh, Tinanong niya, hey, hey Shato, is, is this you? Tinanong niya kung sino itong batang to. Well, obviously, it's Shato. Lalo siya naging interesado sa, sa past, sa past, basically, ni Shato. And, well, Shato just blew him off like, it's none of your business. Parang ganun, ganun na sabi niya Tinanong naman ni Shato sa kanya kung bakit um, well basically what's in it for him if he still if he if he's still making contact with her. Eh binalik lang sa kanya ni Riyang ha yung tanong na yun. So, final scene tumunog yung tumunog yung landline yung yung, yeah, yung landline phone ni ni Shato. Umon yung voice message at yung pala nanay niya ang tumatawag reminding her of um, of her father's death anniversary. Eh well sinabi na lang ni Riyang ha looks like I caught you at a bad time. I'm leaving. So eh sinabi na lang ni sin- Riyang has Riyang has parting shots were next time um, don't let strangers don't let strangers into your home that easily. They're all there are some bad people out there. As coming from you. <laughs> Let's just break this episode down. Um, critic substat. Pace. Like I said in the in the beginning of this review, I had those aftermath feels. Slow, but not excruciating, but slow and contemplating. I think gonna talaga yung money. Ganun talaga ang isang aftermath episode eh. Now, yung uh, medyo kung make up yung pacing nung sa backstory sequence na ni ano, nung sa backstory part ni Ryang Ha. We can now say that through the pacing of this episode, uh, Ryang Ha's past has come to haunt him. Has, uh, well, is now knocking. Literally. Kaya, or do I have complaints when it comes to uh, the pacing of this episode? No! Talaga, after matad dating eh. 
Right? The back story was relevant kasi yung pacing talagang pang aftermath siya. So, uh, don't expect me to complain when it comes to the pacing of this episode. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift here was um, the moment uh, Shato relayed house message to Ryang Ha. And what, why did I call this a gear shift? Well, kasi, despite Shato's um, Despite that message being delivered by Shato, Ryang, Ryang Han now knows all too well that sooner or later, his past will come to haunt him. At ito na nga. Na-involved pa yung, yung girl na kinapupusuan niya. You can say it's a gear shift that's worth, yeah, that's worth looking into. And sinaplement patuloy ng, ng back story na sumunod dun. So, I just got to um, I just got to classify this one as a gear shift, mga ka lifestyle. Kasi this one triggered the backstory. Second gear shift was when Shato uh, reported for work. Ayun, todo apologies dun sa boss niya. Kasi of course for um, for totaling the car and for a dead witness. But why did I call this a gear shift, folks? This is probably the this is the gear shift I see where Shato starts covering up for Ryang Ha. Maybe she has an agenda of her own. Pwede rin. Gagamitin niya siguro yung pagiging masugid naman niligo sa kanya ni, ni Ryang Ha for her own sake. Well, Ryang Ha has, has said it himself here. Something to this effect. Sinabi niya, I've been proven, oh, I've proven to your company, well, I'm useful to your company because through me, you, you've had a lot of bounty hunting jobs that are successful lately. Final gear shift was, well, was when Shato's mother called sa landline niya. Um, why did I call this a gear shift? Simply lang, folks. Shato's past is now being shown, is now being uncovered here. It's not just Ryang Haas. Kung tutusin nyo, mas enigmatic, uh, mas question mark ang, ang past ni Shato kaysa kay Ryang Ha. Kasi, episode 1 pa lang, okay, pilot pa lang, nauungkat na yung nakaraan ni Ryang Ha. Si Shato, ano lang eh, uh, final scene na ng episode 1 pero hindi na hindi na kinelay over dun. Baka dito pa lang. It makes me want, it made me wonder, it made me think about Shato's past naman. Which, it's still uh, we still don't have any clue as to what it looked like. Si Ryang ha, alam na natin. Episode 1 pa lang. Kung bakit siya kung bakit siya wanted ng mga iba't ibang bounty hunting companies. So, these three gear shifts that I saw, the last one, will play a role down the line in this anime kasi like I, well, I've been saying it all review long, mga ka lifestyle. Shato's past, Shato's past is, for me, it's shadier than Ryangas. Uh, plot lines. Except for the backstory sequence, malinis. Kasi, um, although the backstory sequence isn't part of the main continuity of the episode, it was, it also served as an explainer to the first gear shift. Lagi na yung correlation ng, ng flow at saka ng, ano, ng, ng plot. So, pace, flow, and plot. Umaga, the flow and the plot define this episode. So, Love of Kill, episode 3. I'm doing this with no mic, folks. <laughs> Two thumbs up! Ay, hindi ko na matatagalin ng review ito. So, my parting shot is, um, kahit after that episode nito, two thumbs up pa rin sa akin. Dahil, yung, uh, yung, 
yung nakaraan naman ni Shadow ang ang medyo naungkat dito. Through of course through through Riyam has nosiness of course bilang masugid naman ni Liga eh, she want he wants to know uh, he wants to know everything about Shato para malaman niya kung paano kung paano hihimasmasan ito kung paano uh, how to get on her good side para 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 ma-date niya uli okay <laughs> so again Love of Kill episode 3 two thumbs up So Patreon, wait for my next upload regarding this anime. Now, for those of you who are still stuck with the CHD, no worries. Pero, I strongly recommend that you you subscribe to pay, you subscribe to my Patreon or at least join my fan group on Beagle. Don't meron din ako exclusive content para sa inyo Until then, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. find our main protags being chased by um, a group of demons right talagang talagang hell bent on killing them kasi may karit may itak <laughs> pagugutay-gutay sila ng mga uh, ng mga to so they came across this town wherein uh, some of the town's people were uh, were actually um, what you call this were actually uh, calling them out to, to get into their town. Kasi ang explanation nila, De, safety rito, come on, get in, get in here. No choice sila kasi, ayan eh, ang parating na eh. So, <clears throat> paso. Then, um, to their surprise, hindi na sumunod yung mga demons. Nagtaka, nagtaka tuloy sila, nagtaka, nagtaka, tuloy, nagtaka tuloy ang apat. One of the town's people explained why. Well, kasi ganito yun. Kasi yung yung uh, yung leader ng town namin ay isang isang priest. Isang yeah, isang isang monk. He cast a spell over our town that uh, that serves as a um, barrier against demons. So, natakangin yung apat. Lalo na si Sanso. Ha? Ito tatlong pero hindi naman nila sinabi. Ito tatlong kasama ko puro demon to eh. O di dapat di sila pinapasok. Bakit? Bakit nakapasok pa rin sila sila Goku, Gojo at uh, Hakai? So, nagtaka lang sila. Dito talaga nagkaroon na ng trust issues si Sanzo with regards to the town leader. And uh, nalaman pala nila na uh, magkakaroon pala ng piesta rito that night. Nagplano, nag-decide na yung tatlo, si Gojo, si Hakai, at, at saka si Goku na, well, to celebrate with them. Pati pate The three came across um, a side show wherein meron nakataling angel. Now, it's obviously an angel kasi because of its wings. Eh... Ang tingin ng mga townspeople dito, demon. Siyempre, naka... naka... katali. Eh, gusto nilang, gusto nilang makita ng lumilipad ito. Eh, ngayon, eh, siyempre, may pipigilan nila, pipigilan nila Gojo yan. But, while they were, while, while they were about to, um, to pacify this crowd, bigla na sila nahilo tatlo. Nagtataka ngayon si Sanzo kung bakit um, up to now, hindi pa bumabalik yung tatlo. So yung, yung parang right hand man ng, ng town leader, pinuntahan si Sanzo sa kwarto, ni, sa kwarto nila. And sabi niya, Mr. Sanzo, would you like to, uh, could, would, you care to uh, would you care to accompany me? Because, uh, because your, uh, your three friends have just passed out on the street. Pero nagtaka si Sanzo kung bakit he wasn't being led to to uh, to the place where in uh, yung talagang nagkaasayaan na mga tao. Kasi he was he was there 
He was there several hours ago. Kasama, kasama kasi ng apat eh. He was led to the palace of the town leader. Eh gusto pala siyang kausapin ng town leader. Pero right there and then, sinabi niya sa town leader now, na, nope, you are no priest. You're a fake. So, doon na, dun na kalata ng, ng town leader na, nako, hindi, hindi ko mako, hindi ko, mag, hindi ko magiging kakampi to. Then, all of a sudden, mm, he, uh, Sanzo gets flung through a trap door that leads to a tunnel where um, several demons are already waiting for him. Ang natumba yung mga demonyo. <laughs> hindi si Sanzo. So while this was happening, nagising na lang sila, Gojo, Hakai, at Goku, na nasunod na sila ng isang prison cell. Isang, they're, they're in a dungeon of sorts. So, God, sabi niya, Uy, teka, teka, ano kaya nangyari kay Sanzo? Baka, baka ganito na yung nangyari ha? But, they just had to get out. Hindi may, hindi may, may hatak ng ganun ni, ni Goku because it's, the bars were too thick. Hindi, ka, hindi niya kaya. So, ang ginawa ni Hakai, may, may tinatago pala siyang skeleton key. Mm, nakalabas. All they were on their way out the palace, hinahanap muna nila yung town leader. Eh, sabi nila, sabi ng town leader, well, here I am. Why are you looking for me? Ayun, hinarap nila at hinaman pa ni Hakai ang town leader na na magkas ng spell sa kanilang tatlo since they are since all three of them are demons hindi kinagat ng town leader so well that confirms sabi ni Hakai that confirms our suspicion you're a fake so now the whole town is against them then suddenly a uh, gunshot suddenly a gunshot yun pala si Sanzo na all battered and bruised. May tama pa siya rito. Duguan. So, well, they had, they had to tend to Sanzo. And, uh, they just, sa- sabi nilang ni Sanzo, out of my way. He told the townspeople. So, well, siguro, sa tao kay Sanzo. And, nagtaka ngayon yung town, yung town leader kung bakit hanggang ngayon buhay pa to. Sinabi nilang ni Sanzo, that's the way it is. This is the path we've chosen. Ooh! Final scene! It's actually a post-credit. It involves Hazel and the one they met during the final scene of... Uh, of episode 3. His name pala is Sokoku. Sanzo rin pala ito. Now, after... Siguro, uh, kasi... They, but they were in a bar. So, siyempre, nag-kakwentuhan. Uh, May nalaman siguro si Hazel dito that uh, in as much as sinabi niya kay Sokoko, um, Sir, I need to go. I need to confirm something. Sabi ni, well, sabi ni Sokoko, Yeah, by all means. So, let's break this episode down now. Critic sub style. Pace. The only time that the pacing started becoming, that, that the pacing started to become tense was nung uh, what you call this? Nung nag-pass out na sila Goku, Gojo, at Hakai. It's the type of pacing that will make you deep dive already. Right there and then. Kasi naging tense yung pacing. So, Kako, Teka, meron, meron ba sila kaaway dito? Pabiglang, napagano na lang sila. Diba? So, do I have complaints when it comes to the pacing of the episode? Nope. Because I've seen uh, an episode like this before from Sayuki. I think that was uh, probably in the original series or even re- even the first reload. Para may gumanito na sa kanilang isang bomba yan eh. So naman, well, first gear shift here was when this, um, this, uh, these townspeople uh, help them out to in uh, avoiding this this large band of demons. Why did I call this a gear ship? No brainer, folks. It triggered the episode. Second gear ship was 
of course, the scene where Goku, Gojo, and Hakai passed out all of a sudden as they were about to help this um this demon from getting uh, from from getting violated even more. But again, a no-brainer of a gear ship. Dito mo dito mo na makukuha yung idea kung sino ang gusto ang gusto magpatumba dito sa mga sa mga bida natin. Final gear ship was when um Sanzo interfered uh, up to the, up the the moment up to the point where Sanzo interfered pero sinabi na ng town's people na alam na namin ang plano mo sir sinabi na mismo sa town leader pero you uh, we've been we're we're too grateful for you so tutulungan ka na namin Probably the wildest gear ship I've seen in in a Sayuki series so far. Okay? Because well, alam mataga na pala alam ng ng taong bayan na may kalokohang ginagawa ang leader nila. And they well, I I think they've been turning a blind eye to this for a very long time kasi sila mismo nagbe-benefit. Hindi sila ginugulo ng mga demons tuloy. At all, it's still wrong. You're sacrificing, you're sacrificing tourists, para lang, para manatiling tahimik ang bayan nyo. <laughs> At what cost? You know, this, this gearship will tell you that this town has literally sold its, literally sold itself to the devil, sold its soul to the devil. You can now conclude that <laughs> because of this gearship. So these three gear shifts that I saw, um, the last one will play a role down the line in this anime. Why? Because if you're new to to this anime franchise, you will now get the idea that well, they have encountered towns. It's probably the first time they've encountered such a town. Blood lies. Planchado. Bakit? In all the scenes that Hazel is involved, puro side story. Pero, these are well placed, especially the final scene. Post credit eh. So, well, hindi na uh, related sa main continuity ng episode ito. So, okay lang. Mm, sige, gawin mo post credit scene yan. Okay lang sa amin. Okay lang sa akin, for particularly. <laughs> At least, hindi mo ginulo yung main continuity ng, ng episode. Kaya, planchado ang plot. Well, do I have complaints? None, absolutely. So, pace, flow, and plot, we all came together for this episode. Talagang, um, talagang profound yung sinabi niya nung yun eh. Yung sinabi ni Sanzo na yun. We all take our own paths. Pero, it's pero be prepared for the consequences of the path you've chosen. Ganun lang yun. Yung, there, there is wisdom in what Sanso said right there. Talagang lumabas yung pagiging mock niya rito. So, Sayuki Reload Zero Win Episode 4. Deserve. Two thumbs up. Kaya nga, yun yung nakikita yung title and thumbnail. The path we've chosen. That's why. Because, uh, may moral lesson dito ang episode. May moral lesson kay mapupulot sa episode dito, which is, um, which is a uh, somewhat rarity for Sayuki these days. Uh, simula nung ever since Blast yata, ever since Blast na nagkaroon ng ganitong episode much less the, pangalawang episode na lang may, may moral lesson eh so I think they're I think Lion Films is making a good call here to um to just stick to uh stick to the original storyline kaya uh four episodes in maganda si Ruin so again 
Sa Yoki Reload Zero in Episode 4. So, thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this. Wow. This a Yoki series, mga manar style. Bigat na lesson yun. Ang bigat. So, Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still stuck to uh, the CHD, well, power tip. Subscribe to my Patreon or join my fan group on Bigo. I got exclusive content for you there. But in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Ah, uh, no to continuation. Para hindi. So, again, daily lives di Shota. But this time, si, well, si Yuzu, si Yuzu, si, si Yuzu Sensei took a, um, to, took a one week leave dahil meron. Karen took it upon herself now to, um, to formulate some kind of a game wherein Nagkaroon ng parang swimming competition nakasali si Shota. All the best times were tabulated, were tabulated ex- ang nakapagtataka except for him. Except his. His own his own time. Yung pala, all the best times are tabulated from first to last. So, kung sino ang ma, kung sino may mata, kung sino may mas magandang uh, finishing time, yun ang Yun ang magiging yun ang magiging katabi ni Shota for a week. <laughs> so enter si Ichijo, anak mayaman. And talagang um, uh, a product of the old Japanese way na kapag mayaman ka, meron taga bihi, meron kang taga bihis, taga ano, you, you won't actually do anything. You just let the servants um, put those clothes on you. So, ganito, ganito rin naging function ni Shota. Then, uh, until eventually, he gave in and had sex with Ichijo. Eventually, na-figure out ni Shota kung ano ang ang purpose niya dito sa school. Ipinatutuo lahat ng halos lahat sinabi niya ni Karen. Yes, you are here because well, you're a bit of an ex- you're you are valuable. So, that's why you're here. And you're also being giving us experimental input. And the all the girls here have been selected just for you. So, that means only one thing. <laughs> Lahat na mga babae dun sa school pwede niyang anakan. <laughs> to, to prove her point, Karen... Um, took uh, took Shota to a classroom. Then, uh, after explaining it to him, ganito, ganito, she ordered all the girls in the room to to disrobe. Adilak si Hubaran. So, and just she told Shota, ayan, you're free to choose. <laughs> Grabe. So, final scene, basta na lang gumano si Shota, sumakit ang ulo. <laughs> So mga lifestyle, let's break this episode down now. Critic sub style. Peace. What? It well, if I it had a slow play, pacing from start to finish, pero I find the pacing funny. <laughs> Kasi here's this 18-year-old guy who just woke up from cold sleep. Now, he is the um no, it's not just the object of sexual desire these days. He's the object of biological desire. There's a bit of suspense being built up. Uh, yeah, I could feel that. Pero I just couldn't... I just couldn't lay my finger on it. Eh. But thanks to the pacing, ayun. Eventually, nalaman natin na, yep, Shota is being experimented on because of his immunity to the MK virus. Obviously, mga kalaysa, I have no complaints when it, when it came to the pacing of this episode. Talagang, medyo... Medyo nagulat ako sa revelation in the end. <coughs> Flow na ba? First gear shift here was when um was when Karen um took Shota to gym class. Eh ang gym class nga nun was swimming. 
But why did they, why did they call this a gear ship? Well, I think this was Karen's way of getting Shota to um to impregnate as many girls as he can. Kasi, hello, naka swimsuit lahat. Alright, it is the um it is the gear shift that probably triggered the episode. Second gear shift was I think on the last I think this was the last night of Ichijo's stay with Shota. Dito sina nag sex. This is actually the second night pala. Second night na na natulog si Ichijo sa kwarto ni Shota. Why did they call us a gear shift? This is probably yeah. This was the gear shift that, for the probably for the first time in this in this anime, Shota actually let it loose. Kung niya, well, in in a way he said, ah fuck this, let's 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 see what happens from here. <laughs> Parang ganon eh. Final gear shift was when again, ah, Karen finally admitted to Shota that, yep, um, you're being, you're not only you're assigned here to um well to to have sex as well as many girls as possible but you're giving us um data input it's a no-brainer of a gear shift now that shota knows that shota knows that um well he's being experimented on and well at the moment he's not quite happy this is the gear shift that will probably tell you nakupo Mawawalan ng gana to si Shota na makipag-sex sa ib- na makipag-sex. Paano na to? So these three gear shifts that I saw, guys. The last one will play a role down the line in this anime. Si Reito ayaw pa. Inaanap pa niya kasi girlfriend niya. Ngayon naman si Shota. Nakita na niya yung magnitude ng kanyang sexual duty so and, he, and he's only 18 still a teenager plot wise mm. aha planchado kasi the camera uh, temporarily veered away from Shota bumalik kay Rito so, I believe that's a side story. Pero, hindi siya yung side story na total waste. Kasi, kumbaga, um, the episode gave us a break from Shota. At binalik muna sa main protag. Kung ano yung ginagawa niya while, while, um, while the Shota situation was going on. Alright? Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. The actual final scene was... Um, the UW Top Brass holding a meeting regarding yung status ni Suwo. Kasi, it's been um, two weeks yata. And, si, si number two, si Rito, hasn't had sex yet with any, uh, with any woman. So, yep. And they have decided na, na that they should fire her. Kasi, nagiging incompetent na siya. You can also call that a side story kasi while all while the Shota situation was going on, these are happening. These things are happening. So, it's a well-ironed out plot. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. Right? So, let me, clear, let me be clear on you guys again. The actual final scene is that scene where the UW top brass is have uh, have decided that they should fire Suwo because of her inability to convince uh, Reito to have sex right away. So, World's End Harem episode 4? <laughs> Tignan naman mo episode number. Yeah, deserve. Two thumbs up. Balikan natin yung ano, yung yung scene where in uh, um, to call this, where Karen already leveled with uh, with Shota regarding uh, his uh, his stay in that school, 
He's not allowed to go out unless he's with Karen. Now that he knows the um, the magnitude of of his sexual duties, eh, eh, what do you expect? He's only 18. Okay? Practically, still a teenager. So, hindi ano kung gagawin niya sa, sa ganito klase sitwasyon. So, yeah, that gear shift alone can have implications if not in the next episode, in later episodes, siguro. Pero, oh, uh, he's a really nice kid, si Shota. Para rin si Rito eh, pero at 18. Yun na, si Rito, talagang ano eh, uh, yung sexual resolve niya, matibay eh. Halatang, halata yung maturity niya eh. So, pero, um, it might cost Suo her job. If he doesn't, if he doesn't have sex now, <laughs> it might cost, it might cost her her job. Bakamawala pa siya ng attendant. Eh, ano ne? Uh, may dynamic na sila pareho eh. So, ah, let's just wait for the next episode, okay? So again, World's End Harem Episode Four. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this. Wow. This this really wild anime, mga lifestyle. Shota. Wag ka nang pull yourself together. Just have sex with anybody. <laughs> so, Patreon, wait for my next upload. For those of you who are still stuck to the ARD, uh, ARD, the CHD. Ang wild kasi ng World's in Haru, kaya nawala, ko sa fo- nawala focus ko eh. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. You can see na Picked up where episode 15 left off Well, of course Ano natin lahat na Si Susume Yuito yeah, that's, his, that's his full name Yung batang uh, Yung batang God candidate uh, Who uh, Who just told uh, Who just told the whole world That he wants Red to become God Japan isn't the only one anymore looking for these God candidates. All major countries in the world are now looking for them. So, one day, uh, kasi nag-decide na sila uh, Mirai at Saki to, well, to lead normal lives. Chill, chill lang. One day, merong numapit sa kanila na dalawang na dalawang detective. Uh, obviously, ma- mag-boyfriend to. Si Hoshi at si... Si Yumiki. Hoshi went for Mirai. Si Yumiki went for Saki. Uh, Makaisa man na pag-uusap nila Hoshi at Mirai. Then, a commotion came from Saki's, um, from, from, from to where Saki is. Yun pala, natirahan niya, natirahan niya pala ng red arrow si Yumiki. So, well, we all know what happens when you get shot by a red arrow. When you get shot with the red arrow, you're loyal to that person for 33 days. So, ayun. Uh, so, na-realize na ni Hoshi kung gano'ng kalakas sa mga God Candidate. Talagang, talagang pang Diyos ang kapangyarihan. Then, um, he, he just told both Mirai and Saki that, well, he doesn't want, um, let's call this, he doesn't want others to know about uh, the existence of these God candidates. Dahil, they're too, uh, you guys are too powerful. But, uh, well, we're there, they are doing everything they can to gather all the other re- the remaining God candidates. Binawa nila Hoshi and uh, Yumiki, um, binigyan ng safe house, yung sila Mirai at Saki. So, of course, sama sila Nasi at Revel. It looks like it. They come to a consensus that these two can be trusted. Kasi, Si, si, si Nasi na ang una nagsabi well, Hoshi isn't lying Dinemo na rin ni Saki Kung anong pwedeng gawin sa isang tao Na tinirakan ng Red Arrow Of course That person can be given wings So dinemo niya Nagtanggal siya ng isang ring niya Binigay niya kay Yumi Ka Yung bigla lumipad <laughs> bigla, siya, bigla siya lumutang na ganon And she's now able to see Both angels 
So, nire-relay na lang niya kung gusto sabihin nila na si Revel kay Hoshi. Right there and then, uh, nagkaroon sila ng... So, but, Mirai and Saki basically told Hoshi and Yumiki before that na they're more than willing to help. Now, it all boils, it all boils down now to um, to to Canada's best friend na pinaghihina lang ang God Candidate. So, final scene. After um, what? Binigay na ng girlfriend niya yung kanyang matamis na oh, na, na sila na. But, here is um, Canada's former best friend face to face with Mirai. Nakagano na nga si Mirai, oh. T- mukhang titira na siya ng red arrow, eh. Let's just break this down. Critic sub style. Face. Well, um, it, it had a slow pacing, pero, it was, it's not, uh, it's not the usual excruciating type. Excuse me. <laughs> it's the kind of uh, slow pacing that'll make you realize that Wow. Okay. Looks like Mirai and Saki have new allies. Kung binilisan nila ang pacing dito, wala, sira eh. Hindi mo, yung, hindi mo mararamdaman yung sense of urgency na ini-exhibit ng dalawang police na to. Ng dalawang detectives na to. Who also actually be um, living partners. Well, we're, we're still not confirmed kung talagang husband and wife sila. Right now, they're living partners. Before we go to the flow, I gotta tell you guys, I got no complaints with the, with the pacing of this episode. Sakto lang. First gear shift was when Hoshi approached Mirai. No brainer of a gear shift there. Kasi, you can say that this gear shift triggered the episode. It's a pivotal gear shift. Kasi, number one, uh, it's an unlikely meeting amongst... Um, like-minded characters. Second gear shift was when Mirai and Saki finally decided to um, to help these two cops to help them round up the other god candidates. Kasi, may, well, it's also a pivotal gear shift, folks. Kasi, right after this, may nahuli ng isa. Yung, uh, yung unemployed na girl na parating nasa resort. Yung uh, god candidate ni, ni Yasili. Yun. Yaseli is his name. Yung isang angel na parang baraho. That's Yaseli. Final gear shift was, ayun nga, uh, I forgot his name already. When Mirai came face to face with Khan, with Metropoliman's best friend. Why did they call this a gear shift? No brainer, folks. Kasi, well, suspected God candidate pa lang. Pero, by the way, Mirai looked at him you could say na mukhang may idea na si Mirai na hindi God candidate ito. Kaibigan lang ni Metropoliman ito. Kumbaga, unwilling victim in this social in this uh, in this social media backlash. We can see uh, a potential another potential ally here for for um for team red. For red and yellow. So these three gear shifts that I saw um all of them will 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 have implications down the line uh in this um tiga. coming to the final eight episodes of platinum and oi nasa final 10 na pala tayo nasa final 10 na pala tayo hindi natin nalalaman plot wise mhm malinis I only saw one continuity in this episode. No side story, no backstory, no um no no shenanigans whatsoever. Talagang na focus lahat sa story ang uh, nagkaroon bigla ng dalawang bagong kakampi si si Mirai at Saki. And now in the final scene, there's another potential ally, yung dating best friend ni Kanade. Si Met, ni be, dating best friend ni Metropoliman. So, 
you you will need a really clean plot to tell the audience that this is happening that this is happening all in one episode kasi kung ititipende mo sa pacing so bibilis bibilis ang bibilis ang storya hindi magigets hindi magigets ang plot so tama lang yung baga ng pacing and for for this clean a plot kasi yeah it looks like it then um Mirai and Saki are getting new allies and yeah they should kasi they're being hunted down right now by pra- by by practically every government in the world even Japan even their own home even their own home country so yeah yeah they really need allies so pace flow and plot they all came together for this episode so Platinum End, episode 16. Easy pa. Mm. Two thumbs up. I was supposed to give it the one thumb up lang, pero... Uh, looking at it, um, thinking about it now, the entire episode, sabi ko, hindi eh. Wala eh. Walang sablay. Walang sablay ang episode na to eh. Na pwede mong, na pwede mong gawing rason para bigyan ng... para putulin ang streak ng anime na to. That's a fact, mga ka-lifestyle. Nagang, um, Signal, Signal MD did another wonderful job with this episode. Talagang, wala. Wala ka makikita ng sablay. Ni isa. Although, the pacing is slow, but, it's necessarily slow. Kasi, kung bibilisan nyo nga talaga ang pacing ng episode na to, hindi nyo magigets na but Mirai and Saki now have uh, now have two um, two allies dalawang pulis pa to and in the final scene baka magkaroon pa sila ng isa pa itong dating best friend ni Metropoliman okay so I just couldn't see a single mistake from this episode talagang Ang ganda ng pagkakagawa. Alright? It, this anime still deserves the two thumbs up based on this episode. So again, Platinum End, episode 16. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great anime, mga lifestyle. Wow. Hindi pa napubuto lang streak nito. Baka mag Tokyo Revengers to, ha? Kasi Tokyo Revengers, um, Never, never did I give it the um, uh, a rating lower than two thumbs up. So, right now, Platinum End is is on pace to accomplishing to accomplishing that feat. So, well, let's see. It's not next week. It's the final eight episodes now. So, Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still glued to the CHD, I'll still recommend that you. Subscribe to my Patreon or at least join my fan group in Beagle. But until then, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. <laughs>